It's time to start dreaming again. Let's talk about it. Dear Cult Survivors, welcome back to another episode discussing life after the cult. Usually we talk about the really hard things that you experience leaving a cult and the journey to healing and recovering and all that good stuff. Today, we're going to not really deviate from that, but it'll be on the lighter side of things because often we discuss the trauma and getting in the trenches of what that looks like and what that it, what that feels like. But today we're going to talk about dreaming again. It's time to dream again. Maybe even dreaming for the first time. The cult kills your dreams. You come in, and even if you had dreams and goals and, and ideas of what you want your life to look like or be, the cult quickly replaces those dreams with their group mission. I remember my respective cult. It was a Christian cult, which the mission was to evangelize the world for Christ. So... When they would tell us God has plans for us to prosper us, not to harm us, for us to be abundant, to be fruitful, it was lip service. It was feel good rhetoric. In reality, what they meant was being abundant and being fruitful is recruiting lots of members and being a successful member of the organization. And adding numbers to the organization through Bible studies and and water baptisms and also monetarily. But we were sold this dream, this dream of the man who started the cult, his dream to have churches all over the world in every country, in every major city, to have these Bible talk groups and house churches and all these different places. And it really was more that person's dream that was crystallized into the the structure and ideology of the entire movement. And so this movement, and that's what a lot of cults consider themselves movements. This movement supplants your personal dreams with this mission. And I remember, you know, the Bible verse that they used was a particular verse about going and making disciples of all nations. And this was supposed to be the ultimate dream. Now, anything else in your life is secondary to this. Whatever cult you were a part of, anything in your life, anything that you aspire toward is coming secondary to the group collective and their mission. And in addition to that, if your personal dreams don't align with the bottom line of the cult, then those dreams are either dismissed or demonized or suppressed, you know, and even even they may come against you and abuse you psychologically or even physically to the point where you let go of those dreams, you kill those dreams. And there's a saying which talks about dying to yourself in the particular Christian group I was in, 
where Christ died to himself and we must die to ourselves to follow Christ. We must deny ourselves. And this concept of self-denial runs very deep and it, and it goes into even your own personal goals and ambitions. Because anything that you wanted typically was considered worldly unless it was for the quote unquote kingdom or glory of God in this particular organization. And, and so when we talk about dreaming again, I'm not coming from a place of pie in the sky, uh, magical thinking, more so coming from a place of this is your life now. Because one of the things that happens when you when you leave a cult is it's like being in a jail and the, the bars open and now you're out. And you're looking around, you're walking around, you know, I'm free. But then the big question becomes, what do I do now? Where do I go from here? Because the cult keeps your thinking so, so imprisoned for so long. They do such a number on our self-esteem, on our worldview, on what we think is possible, what we think is okay to believe for ourselves, you know, what's okay for us to, to think, to feel, and what dreams are okay to have. So when we're talking about it's okay to dream again, it's time to start dreaming again. We're talking about this next chapter of your life after the cult. It's time. It's okay. It's your season to begin dreaming again, or even for the first time. If you're like me and you grew up in a very, very, you know, toxic, abusive home, dreams were squashed. And once upon a time, if you were like me, you were a kid full of dreams and, and visions for your life and, you know, and, and the grit and determination to carry it out. But those dreams get beat out of you. They get squashed out of you. And then the cult comes. And I'm talking about those of us who, you know, were recruited into the cult, not those of us who were born into and raised within a cult. But those dreams may never have been realized at all. So some of you, if you're like me, you actually began to dream for the very first time as an adult getting out of the cult. However you got out of it. Now, once you leave that behind you and the cult is truly in the rearview mirror, now it's time to look in front of you and see, well, what's next for me? What's my next chapter? And I can tell you as someone who's been there, that's the most scariest thing you ever deal with, but it's also the most exciting thing. There is this excitement, this hope, this wonder of, this new world that's in front of you that's available to you now. Even if the cult you were in was like the one I was in that didn't have physical barriers, but the psychological and spiritual barriers were so strong that you lived in a bubble. They used to tell us, you know, you're in the world, but not of the world you did not participate in the world, even though you were working or going to school or interacting with people and doing normal things, but you still, there is this thing where you, you still are not part of it. You're not really engaging with life and experiencing life. So now getting out of the cult, being away from them, now we don't have any barriers to 
interacting with the world around us. And the world around us, the cult said, was a scary, dangerous, evil, dark, lost, stupid, dysfunctional place. Now, we can argue if the cult was wrong about that, but that's for another conversation. Regardless of if they were right about the world or not, the world also is where the possibilities lie. There, It's also where hope lies. It's also where new adventures lie. So with the bad is the good. And, and now being away from the cult, we have the freedom to choose now. No one is telling us what's bad or good. You know, we are on this, this new adventure and it's our adventure. I did a video in the past in the Dear Cult Survivor series talking about it's our journey, not someone else's. And that is the exciting part. It's scary. Yes, it's terrifying, but it's also this super exciting opportunity for us to begin living for the first time, for us to really live the abundant life the cult promised, saying that we would have life to the full. Well, now we have an opportunity to, to at least make an attempt to have a full life now. The barriers of the cult are in the rearview mirror behind us. And so it's time to dream again, or for the first time, it's time to dream. Dream about what? Dream about what you want to dream about. What do you want your life to be? What do you want your life to look like? When we look at the different areas of, you know, human existence, at least in our modern day context, we can divide it into a pie. And if you look on the screen, you see the different areas of life. So you have your social life, you have your professional life, you have, you know, your family life, you know, you have your educational life, and there's just different aspects of life. You can categorize it however you see fit. Because the beauty of it is this is your life. But we have these different areas of our lives that the cult at at one point being a cult member, the cult has to be at the center of the pie. The cult is at the center of every decision we make, of every decision we don't make, how we dress, who we date, who we marry, you know, how we raise our children what type of career we pursue, it impacts every area of life. So now the dream becomes, what do you want these areas of your life to look like? And it's easier, I think, to divide them in the areas, not because they don't overlap, but because it gives us more clarity when we're really thinking and pondering and just considering this new adventure, this new chapter of ours. And I don't care if we're older, because that's another thing. Some of you may leave the cult and you may be in your later stages of life. And I just want to say that it is something that I struggled with even when I left. And, you know, I was 30 years old when I left. And in my mind at the time, I felt majority of my life was over. And that becomes relative, right? Because now at the age I am now, that just seems so funny to me. But also, I do have compassion on why I felt that way. When you spend your formative years in a cult, it does impact where you're at at that particular phase. But it's one thing that's never too late is to begin visualizing what you want your life to be like, what you want to spend your days like, what kind of people do you want in your life? You know, do you want to travel? Do you want 
to change careers? Do you want to start a new career? Maybe you always had a dream of doing a particular thing that in the cult you were forbidden to do or coerced out of doing or discouraged from. Me, you know, now you have the opportunity to revisit that and look at it. And of course, there's realism that we have to consider. I mean, if you had a dream of playing in, in you know, National Basketball League and you're 60, I don't think that's going to happen. But what it becomes now is in your freedom, what do you want to be? And I don't mean just like a job or a career. That's part of it. That could be something if that matters to you. But once you get to think about what matters most to you now, what is that? I mean, do you want, do you want your life you know, to be abundant in what particular ways? For each person, that looks different. For some people, it's about the community and the relationships in their lives. And coming out of a cult, a lot of times you have to let go of a lot of those toxic, harmful relationships. And, and if you're like me, that was something that was important to me is creating a, a new community, a new lifestyle of nurturing relationships with people whether they're friends, whether they're colleagues, professionally, neighbors, you know, who's in my social network, you know, and that's something that I began focusing on. And those things began to fall into place as I took one step, action step at a time in that direction. You know, maybe it is something where you want to you know, take a different direction in your life. I mean, whether it's the relationships, maybe it's your physical health. I was in that situation too, where I was finally free after the cult to be able to focus on, you know, taking care of my physical health. I had a chronic and I still have, you know, a a lifelong chronic issue when it comes to health. And And I really neglected myself during my years in the cult. And so, you know, the the next chapter was me going on this journey of taking care of me, of loving myself by taking care of my physical health. Mental health is another one. Like, what's your vision for your mental health? You know, what's your vision for your physical health? What's your vision for the health of your relationships in your life? What what you know your maybe your your financial health there's just whatever it is you can imagine or visualize or or you desire it, it you can think about it and you can begin swimming in that water of possibility because now all of that energy and focus that the cult was absorbing from us We can take and focus on the things that truly matter and will make our lives worth living. And so it's time to dream again. It's time to put you at the forefront of your life. It's time to find what truly matters at your very core and to put your energy, your time, your emotion, your essence into being and having the best life possible until next time. Mm-hmm.